Hi, I'm Cesar Costa, the founder of Atman Multi Capital, and today I'm going to talk about how to inspect multifamily buildings and avoid costly mistakes. So I have been to a property several weeks ago, and I returned a couple of times. And my opinion about the property changed as I got more information and I was able to inspect more units. At the first sight, they showed me, of course, the best units. And then I saw other ones that were not so good. And finally, I was able to get to the worst ones. So that's why it's important for you when you're doing an assessment of a multifamily building to have some volume of units inspected. At least you want to see about one third of the units. So it gets harder for them to hide uh, anything from you. This video is not the property. That's somewhere else, but I'm not going to show here to protect the sellers. I'm going to introduce myself quickly here. I'm, uh, I'm an engineer. I have an MBA from Michigan. I worked 30 years in big companies, leading large team, developing new marketings, launching, launching new products, expanding commercial operations for companies such as Yahoo, Global Crossing, Lucent Technologies, Intel, Lauret. I managed teams of 256 people and more uh, in some of those companies. So I have um, a good experience in managing large projects. Also, I have performed some startups. I started my own telecommunications career in one point of my career. I worked for a startup that was bought by Intel called TV. Here in Florida, I started a house master home inspections. It's a franchise, so I bought the business about seven years ago. Uh, and also I founded Etman Multi Capital. That is a company dedicated for multifamily investments um, with syndication and value add. Here in Florida, I teach classes also for realtors on inspections, mold, termite, selling, and negotiations. Uh, I have trained over 3,000 realtors in the last two years alone. Uh, mostly with Broward Board of Realtors. Besides a property inspector, I had my own mode license. I have my pest control license. I'm a, I do infrared, so I'm a CRT level one. I fly drones, I'm a drone pilot. I do series scope and so much more. Uh, I have all the services that you can imagine here in inspections. We have done over 5,000 inspections only on the last five years alone. I also, I'm the author of What Every Realtor Should Know About Home Inspector, Inspections. Uh, this book is available on Amazon. It's not only good for realtors, but also for multifamily investors. It's a book about inspections, mold and termite. You're going to love it. All right, so let's jump in into this case and what I have seen during this inspection. So the first impression was beautiful. They have classic units and premium units. The premium units, they installed vinyl plank floor, floor good floor, good installation. Um, everything was looking fine. Uh, it was a little smelly, but I don't know, it might be because the unit was closed. Kitchen was not the best, but uh, uh, getting there. This was another kitchen. They call these premium units. But you know, the first tip for you is be careful with appearances and always check those cabinets because renters will. They will open cabinets to take a look what it is. And when a prospective renter opens this and see a hole on the left side and these very old cabinets, it gets harder for you to charge a premium rate. At the first look, these other cabinets on top of the range look fine, but at a closer look, the one next to it, it was full of bubbles and blisters because there was water damage, it was not well painted. You know, this is not going to create a good impression. People pay attention to cabinets. That's my tip for you. People pay attention to cabinets and kitchens. 
and then bathrooms. Those are the two most important elements. One thing that I always do is to open the AC cabinet. What do you see here? Well, yeah, you're right. It is an AC. You're right. But what I see is this. Take a look at the coils. See how dirty it is. All this dirt is going to Accum help to accumulate bacteria and mildew. That also is going to impede the proper airflow. So it's going to reduce the efficiency of their handler. Also, all this bacteria is going to go through the air and people is going to breathe that bad air. So a filter not only keeps the coil clean and help on the efficiency of their handler, but also helps to improve the quality of the air. A cheap filter costs $1. A premium filter costs $7. Wouldn't worth invest $7 to have the air clean it and removed from bacteria, mildew, mold, and everything else? My opinion, yes, it's worth it. It's a bad economy to save on air, fi air filters. Get the best filters possible. My recommendation is MERV, MERV 8, M-E-R-V 8 ra uh, rating. Not these ones that are here. This is crappy. Another thing that I see also, all these spider webs. Do you want to see spider webs on your AC? No. So that's a, a tip that they are not doing a good job in pest control. They're not cleaning. And they're not making the units rent ready as they should be. You know, the preparation here is not the best. Okay. Um, at the second second impression, that was the first impression. So units were okay. Um, I had the hint that the maintenance and, and the glove and care was not there yet, but um, not a big deal. Second impression. Then I visited some classic units, uh, rent ready, they said that's rent ready. Same thing, the first thing that I do, I open the AC closet to see the conditions of the AC and water heater. AC because they are the most expensive component on the condo. And the water heater is because that's the number one source of leaks and issues and water damage and mold growth. So those two components are very important during the inspection. So I took a look at this uh, water heater. The question is, what do you see? So what I see here is that the building has over 40 years. This water heater is 20, so they replaced already. But then we, when they replaced, they didn't fix the floor. The unit before leaked. Here is all rotten wood. Um, they didn't do anything. The problem with this is this rotten wood it's it's conducive it's a conducive condition to mold growth and having molds on the ac closet is not a good idea also they did install an emergency drain pane to avoid those problems it's very cheap it's like a plastic uh ten dollar thing that you put on the bottom of the water heater so when when a plumber installs they usually do properly Probably this one was done a handyman and they didn't pay attention. Um, so little details that's going to help you to save money on the maintenance. Also, what I see here, improper wire installation. And the bottom of this AC tank is so rusted. So rusting in a tank happens from inside out. So when the outside starts to get rusted, the inside is all corroded. That means that these will leak. And a leak on the water heater will damage the carpet, and the drywalls is going to get a little more expensive to repair. So it's a good idea when the water heater is approaching uh, 20 years old, after 15 years old, and start to get rusted in the bottom, to replace it. It's going to be cheaper to replace it than to fix the water damage afterwards. And on the back of the water heater, what I saw, what do you see here? Well, you might mention the spiders, right? Yeah, it's not the spiders, it's the black mold. 
and once again black mode on the AC closet is not a good idea so this is another occupied unit that I saw pretty beautiful new floors paint was okay kitchen and what I'm gonna do in the occupied unit yes I'm gonna open the cabinet um, I'm gonna open the cabinet and I'm gonna take a look on the water heater I'm gonna come back here so what do you see here what do you see here so if you insert uh, improper piping you got it that's a hose it's not a pipe so even for the condensation lines you need to have the proper piping lack of insulation on the refrigerant lines and what's going to happen if those lines were not well insulated condensation will happen and the humidity is going to drip and it's going to cause mold um how much does it cost an insulation for a refrigerant line 10 bucks but not taking care of those small details then here in the bottom here we go we have that black mold on the ac closet so what is going to happen remember this was occupied unit if you have mold on the C closet the ac will get those mold spores and recirculate five to ten times during the day and that helps to spread those mold spores and people can get really sick with black mold it can be a lawsuit right there um and that seems to be a common theme on that uh, development there so that was another one the same thing so back back here what do you see another occupied unit what do you see you see a sink right where well, we see mold on the back of the sink the same thing here what do you see you see a bathtub yeah i see also mold on the ceiling of the black tub and this is very common but that shows that they're not having semi-annual inspections on the occupied unit to make sure the tenants were taking care tenants are taking care of the of their units and that's something that you can request them to do to clean their bathtubs and avoid mold on the tiles and now coming back to the kitchen what do i see yes i do open the cabinets even occupied units again more mold do you want to cook in a pan that is sitting on a cabinet that has all this mildew fungi bacteria growing that can get in your food preparation that can make you sick so that, that's a health concern this is so important it's not just any stain every time they have water in wood or drywall that will trigger mold growth and after a week maybe a couple of weeks that mold can evolve to black mold and that's not a good idea that does affect people's health and depending on your sensitivity you might get more sick or, or less and that that's another one it seems there is a common theme you need to remove the affected materials and replace with new ones after you have water damage if it's wood um, high quality wood you can dry it out but you need to take care another thing that I saw a lot of units they have rugs what does it tell you this tells you that um, people don't like their carpets right they don't like their carpets um, and there was this smelly as well that's because you have humidity and that humidity can help that bacteria mold mildew development okay so that was the second impression very different from the first one it's still you know i had a very good idea on what needs to be done how much it's gonna cost but then we are able to negotiate pre-access to the units uh while psa has been negotiated and during the pre-access I was able to visit more units as more you see you start to see the units that they didn't want you to see at the beginning the ones that are the worst ones right uh, so i saw much more interesting cases the plan was to replace kitchen and bathrooms anyway so being 
in a bad shape is not a big deal. However, there are some things that are important here that needs to be taken into account. That was my computer right there. Um, that's fine, missing drains, okay, mold on the cabinets, that's okay. Older appliances, 20 years old, you can't rent units with 20 year old dishwasher because they're gonna leak, it's gonna be a mess. Fridge was all rusted, um, but no big deal. We're planning to replace anyway. But here, getting to the uh, bathtub, for example, what do you see? So you might say, well, you, you see a leak in here on the diverter, on the faucet as well, right? There is a leak going on here. But I see a little further. Let me show you what is the issue here. Every time that you have a leak on the faucets, and the faucets are classic original, and they are more than, let's say, 40 years, um, approaching 50, you will have to replace uh, the plumbing behind it and all the uh, connection. So replacing the faucet is it's, it in, includes opening up the, the wall, replacing the drywall, they'll have to do tile work. So that's an additional cost. So those are all additional costs that you need to take that into account. And sure enough, the unit below had a leak and a leak in the drywall and those stains could be mold. You need not only to paint the drywall, but you need to replace the drywall. And maybe sometimes even do some, some work on, on the studs or joists to, uh, if they have moldy, you need to apply some chemicals or ginger products to take care of that. But also, um, that leak has been going through the drywall on the back of the tile and has reaching the drywall. So more water damage and mold repair. So replacing drywalls there, maybe study work as well. But also that leak has flown below the floor <clears throat> on the substructure. So the floor is sagging, might be additional work. So additional money. So all of that you need to have into account when you see uh, signs of water damage, that's going to be additional, additional money. So what do you see here? The lamination of the doors, right? The lamination of the doors indicates water damage. Sometimes they wash their bathrooms with a lot of water, which is not what we're supposed to do here. Um, but in this case, because of that leak, I think one point in time, either the tub overflown or that leak went through and left the bathroom and reached the, the corridor. Um, and that's what happened. So I took a very close look on the bedroom just in front of the, um, of the bathroom, the bedroom in front of the bathroom. Um, and there was a very bad smell, very bad smell. And that's because the carpet is moldy. The humidity will foster bacteria, mildew, fungi, mold growth. Uh, so what you need to do here is not only replace the carpet, but you need to dry out well uh, the surface. Otherwise, the mold is going to return. And that's what is happening there. They're replacing carpets, but not drying out properly. And the units get smelly. When someone gets inside the unit and ah, this smells terrible here. What they go, what they do? They rent next door. They go to your competitor. And all those are flags, right? Plastics here in the bottom because they're trying to hide. Probably the bottom it's gone. Um, that's why. If you see the little dust and droppings in cabinets, that could be a couple of things. Could be termites. Uh, which were not in this case. I'm also a termite inspector. But in this case, it was uh, insects droppings, like cockroaches and other similar. So another flag of pest control. What do you see here? You see a window, right, in your walkthrough? Well, one thing that property inspectors uh, do very well, it's always we take a very clo close look around windows to see if they're leaking. 
but when I see those uh, signs of water damage, uh, I know that we will have to reseal all the windows in that building. So that's an additional cost that needs to be taken into account in this project. And that's why I'm showing you those slides to raise flags and help you to see more on what you're used to see when you walk through. What do you see here? Well, yeah, it's just a hole in, in the wall. Well, it could be a hole in the wall, but usually when there is a hole next to the corner like this, it's water damage. Water sits after an overflow of a bathtub or something, and then it finds a way and pff, boom, uh, drops. Or even it starts to drip, someone goes there and just create a hole so the water can leave and avoid damaging the drywall. So that was another example. What do you see here? You might say, well, yeah, I see a dirty closet, maybe with some spider webs. So, well, I see black mold. And again, black mold requires removing the drywalls. You need to replace the drywalls. You cannot just paint it. And you need to take a look at the studs. If the studs have also are moldy, you need to treat that wood with proper products. So, that's going to require additional step. That's an additional cost. And several times when you have mold, you need not only to dry out well those studs, um, but also you need to filter the air because the mold spores will remain there. They're very small. They're like the size of a pollen. Um, they, they get in suspension in the air and they don't leave the unit. Even though you have changed the drywall, they stays there and they keep inside the air handler uh, air ducts, they keep moving. So you need to filter the air with uh, HEPA filters, um, air movers. You need to, to manage and remove and recycle that air. So it's just another uh, additional step. It's not a big deal. Everything can be done. Everything can be repaired. So you just need to take into account their additional costs. Can it get worse? I saw more units as, as I start to see more and more units, uh, then I really start to get to the worst units. That's why it's so important to inspect as many units as you can. Ideally, at least one third of the units you need to see. If you can see everything, even better, but a one third is going to be very hard for them to hide. Let's say if there is 100 units and you see 30, it's going to be hard for them to hide uh, that th those units they are in trouble when you see a lot of units. So the tip for you is see a lot of units. Here, not a big deal. We're going to do a remodel anyway. Kitchen is going to go. Uh, uh, everything is going to go anyway. That was on the plan to spend uh, around 10,000 bucks for the remodeling of the units. But I saw the no red feces in the carpet that's an additional flag for additional <clears throat> pest control and spider webs spider webs <clears throat> that big shows that they have not touched this unit for over a year and that makes worse because if you have a unit sitting there all dirty and with moisture and not taken care of mold can grow more um, and then it's going to just require more to clean um, <clears throat> so humidity on the drywall becomes mold, as I said before. So what do you see? What is the job here? <clears throat> what do you think is the job? You think the job here is, well, replace the cabinet, it's damaged. I see a little differently. The head water damage. If the head water damage, what's going to happen? Drywall behind it will get moist. Moisture in the drywall will trigger fungi growth. Probably they have mold. If it has been moist for a long time, black mold is going to be there, almost, almost certain. So you need to remove the drywall. You need to treat the studs. You need to dry out surface before you reapply. You might need to filter there. It's all part of mold remediation protocols. <clears throat> Here, those are additional costs. So when you see a cabinet replacement, I see drywall replacement and mold um, 
a mold repair. And then there has been a trend because water damage has not been repaired quickly. So one thing that we need to do in this property is uh, not only to change the profile of the tenants, but also uh, maybe follow up on the tenants. Is everything okay? Do you have any leaks? Do you need me to go? Because we want to repair as soon as possible. Repairing soon reduces the costs of further repairs. Uh, so if the tenants are not used to call for repairs, maybe we need to be a little proactive here. Um, what does it mean? The same thing. They're not repairing. They're just patching. So repairs need to be done completely, you know? That has been there a long time. So another red flag for, for mold. Uh, I'm almost getting to the end here. What do you see? You see stains on the wall, that's a good idea. You see possible water damage around window seals, that's a good one. You see moldy carpets, maybe that one. Maybe you saw uh, this stain in the ceiling, maybe mold in the ceiling. What I see here is a roof leak. Every time that we have a water stain on top of <clears throat> the border or the, the building envelope, the face that is close to the outside, it's a roof leak. So I got my drone, uh, that was the roof uh, on that unit. I got my drone to take a look. They patch it he exactly here. So they had problems before. But why? If the roof is looking so good, is a newer roof, why they're having this problem? So just moving my drone around, I saw a flashing here and just next to the corridor. That is not a good idea. If you want to avoid water to drip and get on, on, on the um, on the axis of the unit, the best thing that you can do is to install, install gutters. Gutters are not expensive at all. It's a good idea. Install gutters, that's it. You're going to take the water, uh, hitting the ground and splashing. Uh, it's going to reduce the maintenance of the building as well. Gutters are always a good idea. You have some maintenance once in a while, you have to clean it to remove the leaves. But here, what happens is all this water flowing, the water is going to hit the flashing. And what's going to happen, a big volume of the water hitting the flashing, this doesn't have um, the, the mechanical capability to handle uh, a strong rain. But all this water here, eventually, pounding and accumulating and flowing, they will find their way to get behind the shingles and the membrane and reach the roof deck and eventually the ceiling. On a roof, what you want to do is to take the water as quickly as possible. You don't want to have water pounding anywhere because that is going to increase the risk of the leaks by 10 times. So not a good design, something that is very easy to fix. Other things that I saw that's recurrent, I already talked about mold. In this particular case, when I got to the unit, um, I almost could not get inside. So strong was the smell. As soon as I left, I had a headache and it took me two hours to get rid of a headache and that shows how mold is powerful black mold can create memory loss black mold can develop attention deficit disorder in kids uh, it's going to affect the capability of kids to learn in school can create problems for people to sleep uh, so it's it affects your neural system and uh, I felt bad after taking a look at this unit. I should have wore a mask. I forgot to bring my mask. What do you see here? Well, it stains around the ceiling close to the AC. What could, what could be the reason? The reason here is because maybe the ducts were not well sealed. And I can see here the ceiling uh, is not the best one. Um, and if cold AC leaks from the air ducts, it's going to create condensation. So it's very normal to, to see condensation around the AC. It's not because you have a water leak, you have condensation. 
um, and that can trigger mold. So it's so important it is to put a tape and, and get all those ducts well maintained that goes a long way. You see, it's small things that goes a long way and save you a lot of money in, in damage afterwards. What do you see in this picture? Well, you see a lot of patches, right? Well, those patches... <laughs> uh, the problem here is this piping is called polybutylene. Polybutylene was used in the 80s. And they are discontinued after a lot of lawsuits. Because those pipes, they tend to leak in the fittings. They tend to leak in the fittings. And insurance companies, they don't accept. This is always a problem. My question is why they have installed they see with so many um you know patches and using polybutylene pipes not a good idea. So my I wonder do they have polybutylene pipes going inside the wall? You see this one? Uh, just to be a little careful here. Uh, if insurance companies find out in their inspections, they might even cancel the policy. Um, or create additional clauses to limit water damage claim. They might increase premiums, so you need to be careful. Poly pipes. Again, black mold, this uh, size, uh, that's really not a good idea. How long has this unit sitting there for spider webs to develop so deep? This is more than one year. So that is going to increase the amount of money that you need to invest on your remodeling because all those risks of mold and further damage the longer it takes for you to fix the more expensive we will get uh, almost the final slides almost at the end here what do you see <clears throat> what do you see on this one what do you see here you might say, well, maybe mold spots, some dust here on the ceiling. Well, in this particular case, it's bad bugs. Bad bugs are terrible. They're terrible because it's hard to kill. Those bastards are resistant to pesticides and take very strong chemicals and a lot of treatments. Um, the problem here in this unit that they still have carpets. So they're treating bad bugs, but they have carpets. Below carpets, they're growing like crazy and they go up, they go everywhere. So you need to take out the carpet, dry out, filter the air, um, and then deal with the bad bugs. So it's not only the pest control company, you need the contractor to give a hand also. Otherwise, they will never end this. Uh, let's just like, if someone trips and fall, who fault it is? If someone trips and fall, who's going to be responsible? You don't want to have any opportunities for people to trip and fall in your unit, right? <clears throat> Not a big deal, just a concrete crack. Well, it is a big deal, and you want to avoid this. Uh, so, guys, it was very nice to spend some time here with you. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Cesar Costa, the founder of Edmund Multi Capital. I also own House Master Home Inspections, and I'm here to help you. If you want me to stop by at your property to take a look and help in inspections, you can count on me. I can do professional reports as well, drone, mold, termite, anything you need. Uh, I'm also a syndicator and also looking to partner with people like you that syndicate and invest in multifamilies on the GP side. Um, I'm open to partner with new teams and new sponsors. Uh, just give me a call at 954-913-5320. 954-913-5320. I hope to work with you. Take care.